What happened after the movie Alien Resurrection? Did Ripley and her crew disappear afterwards, or did they pick up another mission? That's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, if we look back at the story of Alien Resurrection, Ripley 8 was one of many clones of the original Ellen Ripley. Samples of her blood were taken from Fury 161 on ice. Many attempts were made to clone her, but only one of them turned out right. Since this blood sample was when Ripley carried a queen alien inside her, the clone also carried it within her. The queen was extracted but would later show something different. After being in Ripley's body for so long, their DNA merged through the genetic crossover. Ripley would share some xenomorph traits while still looking human, like increased strength, her senses were heightened and slightly acidic blood, while the queen would inherit Ripley's womb. This would give birth to the newborn alien. The newborn would destroy the queen alien as her scent was not recognizable to it. But Ripley's eight scent would make the newborn think that she was its mother. By the end of the story, the newborn is defeated, while a pack of mercenaries aboard the Betty ship escape the Origa with Ripley 8. The ending shows the survivors entering the skies of planet Earth. And after this, the story of Ripley 8 is not continued, at least not in the movies. Before we get to the sequel of this story, I want to bring up another story that was pitched for a sequel, but never got the green light for it. This way, we can compare to see which possible idea was best suited to continue the story of Ripley 8. When Alien Resurrection was released, Joss Whedon, who is a renowned writer, producer, and director, had already started writing the story for Alien 5, which was rumored to be called Alien Revelation. The story would have taken place on Earth instead of in space or in confined places like a ship or facility. This film was going to further explore Ripley 8 and her abilities. However, problems arose when Sigourney Weaver supposedly did not like the script. Things got worse when Alien Resurrection did not do impressive numbers in the box office. After these events, Joss Whedon lost interest in completing his script. There was even a story concept by Tom Woodruff Jr. and Alec Gillis, the guys that work at Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated, but their ideas were also turned down. Ridley Scott, director of the first Alien movie, had shown interest in exploring the Alien universe. His focus was on the origins of the Alien, where did it come from, and who created it. James Cameron, director of the second Alien movie, also showed his interest on another Alien movie. However, he wanted to ignore the events of Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, but just make a sequel to his Aliens movie, but the studio turned down this idea. James Cameron would later share ideas with Ridley Scott, and they would both agree on a few ideas to move forward with a new movie. James Cameron would produce, while Ridley Scott would direct it. Not only did they have an idea in mind for a movie, but actually two movies. The first movie idea they had, which would be the fifth Alien movie at this time, would take place on Earth. It was revealed that the Xenomorphs were actually biological weapons that belonged to a technologically superior race, the space jockeys or engineers. To make things more interesting, Xenomorphs had a telepathic connection with the space jockeys or the engineers, depending on which version we are looking at. Whatever the Xenomorphs had seen, it was all shared with the space jockeys or engineers. But now, with the creation of Ripley 8, one of her new abilities was she also had a telepathic connection to the alien. The aliens would find the location of Earth through Ripley 8, and this information was sent back to the space jockey or engineers. They would then send attack ships to Earth. Ripley 8 would learn this is all her fault, and she feels guilty for it. And so, she locks herself away, trying to prevent them from using her to take out humanity. During the attack, the space jockey or engineers would leave xenomorph eggs on Earth. The planet would act as some type of incubator. The second movie James Cameron and Ridley Scott would produce together would be the sixth Alien movie. It continues on with the previous story. The space jockey or engineers had now taken over Earth. Their focus would then change to attacking other planets. Ripley 8 comes to terms that her connection with the alien is why this happened, and so she accepts it. But she also moves on from it and vows to stop the space jockeys or engineers. She comes out of exile and decides to fight back. These events would take her to the space jockey or engineer homeworld. The story was getting more interesting as it progressed, but in 2003, 
Fox Studios had a script ready for the movie Alien vs Predator, and so they decided to go forward with that movie right away. After hearing about this news, James Cameron would lose interest in the Alien franchise. In 2004, Ridley Scott said during an interview with Famitsu Wave he was still interested in doing Alien 5. This would revolve around Ripley's story coming full circle, but just like the previous ideas of the past, this idea was also rejected and nothing more ever materialized. However, Ridley Scott still showed interest in exploring the Alien origins over the years, which he got to do in Prometheus and Alien Covenant. While the AVP movie did cause James Cameron to lose interest in any future Alien films, he still went to see the AVP movie and he liked it. But as for Ridley Scott, he avoided both of the AVP movies. It seems like he is not a fan of the two franchises coming together. So now that we know what happened to the cancelled Alien 5 projects, we can look at the actual sequel to Alien Resurrection. And as I said earlier, the story of Ripley 8 was not continued in a movie, nor a video game or comic book, but actually a novel. Welcome to Aliens Original Sin. The story continues with Jonner, Vries, Ripley 8 and Call, but now they have a new member, Crack. All of them are in a bar within the space station called Byzantium. A fight breaks out with them and some cargo haulers. Meanwhile, Ripley 8 and Call manage to sneak around. They connect with a secure data core and extract valuable information. As they make their way back, the crew of the Betty heads to their ship, only to be followed by a reporter who recognizes Ripley 8. This reporter named Simone would stow away on the ship. The scene changes to the space station Domes Epsilon. During a routine delivery, one crew member goes to unload the pod and discovers an alien egg. A face hugger emerges and jumps onto his face. The security team would find him later on and he's taken to the medical center. The reporter Simone is later discovered on the Betty. Since he is a reporter, Ripley allows him to stay with them, hoping Simone's connections could be used to expose the company they are trying to stop. Not long after, the Betty is approached by an unidentified vessel. It docks with their ship and several masked men would board the Betty. Our heroes would fight them off, but before these men are questioned, they eliminate themselves to prevent being questioned. The enemy vessel would soon self-destruct, but the Betty ship is able to escape the blast radius safely. Ripley 8 would then reveal what she knows to Simone. Sometime after the Auriga incident, Call would learn about a shadow government group. The crew on the Betty just called it Loki. For several centuries, this shadow group has been communicating and trading with the Malakak. We mostly know them as the engineers. This was the deal. If the group Loki would arrange xenomorph outbreaks on remote colonies, the engineers would harvest the resultant xenomorphs. They had their own plans for the xenomorph, and in exchange, they would gift Loki with advanced technology. Since the crew of the Betty learned about this, they've been trying to stop Loki's plans. The data they took from Byzantium space station gave them information on the next place that is planned for a xenomorph outbreak. They were on a course to Domes Epsilon, hoping they could save some people there. With Simone part of their group, Ripley 8 asks him to reveal the conspiracy to the public. Seeing a great opportunity for a big news story, he eagerly agrees. Upon reaching the Epsilon station, the crew of the Betty would learn that the impregnated person from earlier now gave birth to an alien. Ripley and Jonner would take down this xenomorph, only to discover that more xenomorphs are on board. Ripley would mention that these specimens are somehow different. Their biology only has a subtle change compared to the ones of the past. The team would get separated and try to meet up at the supply bay for an escape, because the docking bay was sabotaged earlier. As the aliens outnumber them, most of the scientists are eliminated or taken away to be impregnated. Simone would never get off the station alive, as he sacrifices himself to save Ripley 8. One of the station's personnel named Cody tries to commandeer the Betty ship, but gets shot by Vries. This encounter would reveal that he was a synthetic placed on the ship by Loki to make sure the outbreak went according to plan. This synthetic reveals to everyone that this new strain of xenomorph has been engineered by the Malakok. They breed more rapidly and each host can spawn a dozen creatures, which makes them even more dangerous than before. This would expand their numbers much faster. Before any more information is given up, his built-in destruct programming would wipe out his memory. 
the team would escape the exploding station from bombs they placed during their ordeal there. And with them comes a single survivor from the scientist team, Angie. She requests to join Ripley and the others to fight against Loki. Ripley accepts her, knowing she will need all the help she can get. So that is what happened after the movie, Alien Resurrection. If we look back at the cancelled projects by Joss Whedon, James Cameron, and Ridley Scott, do you think either one of their stories would have made a good alien film, or was the novel of Alien's original sin sufficient enough? Tell me in the comments section. I did like how the engineer race was brought into the story of Ripley 8. There was even a story of Ripley 8 encountering the Predator species and Terminators, so I will leave a link to that video. If you want to see more alien lore like this one, then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. I have one playlist with all the lore I've covered over many franchises, so check it out. You might find something else of interest. Thanks for watching and supporting my videos. My name is Carlos, or Acid Glow, and I'll see you in the next video.